So it's a big weekend of Gaelic Games action if you are from the uh, Red Hand County of Tyrone. The Miners, of course, looking into an All-Ireland final against Meath and uh, the Seniors playing Kerry in the deferred All-Ireland Senior semi-final. It's a double header for those that will be heading up the road wearing the white and red. One of them guys will be Mr. Paddy Hunter, a uh, local sporting journalist, of course, in the county of Tyrone. Paddy, it's good to see you. You, you too. I don't think I'll be wearing white and red, though. I'm very neutral, as you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are. <laughs> I keep telling yourself that, Paddy. <laughs> Listen, what's the feel around the county of Tyrone this week? Because um, it doesn't happen very often when teams, uh, counties get to send two teams up the road for a double header in Croke Park on, on the one day. So I'm sure it's all very exciting in there. It's funny because it's the second time we've had a, a double header this season. Obviously, the, the hurlers were up in Crow Park uh, for the, the weekend of the Ulster final. Uh, they were in the, the Nicky Racker Cup final. So that was a, a bit of a change that way, you know. So that was interesting on its own bat. But, no, this is this is special. A, 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 an All-Ireland minor final is brilliant to be in. And obviously, following on then with Tyrone and Kerry in the All-Ireland semi-final, it's definitely very, very good. But there's not an awful big buzz on. You know, I was talking to a guy yesterday who sells flags of all things. He says there's loads of flags left. There's no wild buzz. He was in Mayo a couple of weeks ago. He says it's coming down with flags, coming down with bunting. I think people are maybe cautious going into this one. Yeah. Um, well, we'll wait to see how, how the day is going to pan out. Um, Tyrone, obviously, this last couple of weeks, um, they've been sending all the headlines, which I'm sure suits Kerry fine. So it does, Paddy, all based around COVID. According to the joint managers this week, everybody, all numbers are back and they're sort of going through pathways of returning. Uh, it hasn't been, fair to say, the best of preparation for an All-Ireland semi-final, Paddy, has it? Absolutely not. I was talking to a few players. Uh, at the end of the day, if you're in Tyrone, you sort of know people and you, you'd be talking to players even off the record, but they're all thinking certain levels of return is going to be a problem. Not everybody's going to be 100%, but that is a fact uh, from day one. Nobody's going to be 100% fit going into this one, bar the players who avoided COVID. Some of the players were far, uh, were really badly hurt by COVID, both uh, physically and mentally, because it is a knock-on effect. If you're running after coming out of COVID and you you know maybe take an extra breath, you think to yourself, oh no, is this long COVID? Is this? So they have a lot of problems that way. But I suppose the mentality of them is they're getting to Crow Park, talking to one player in particular yesterday, and he was delayed to be playing in an All-Ireland semi-final. And I think that the extra two weeks will have made a big impact to allow that. But it was never going to be fair to allow them to go to play on the 21st mm -hmm. or indeed the previous week. It wouldn't have worked, Ashley, and that's the reality of it. And you wouldn't wish that on any team. And Kerry, to be fair, being sportsmen as they are, wouldn't have wanted to go into an all Ireland final without playing a game either. So that's going to be a, a, a big scenario. I don't think it's going to play a big part in the outcome. It's going to be a better team in the day. That's yeah, and, and we won't actually know to see where Tyrone are until, until the start of the game, Paddy, because at this level at inter-county football, when you miss several weeks of training, particularly when you come off the back of, of, of winning an Ulster final, that is going to have an impact. So it is. There's no doubt about that, oh, Shane. You know, you, you can't stop a player. You've seen players who have maybe picked up an ankle injury or a thigh injury or whatever uh, in, a, in an Ulster final and trying to play the two or three weeks later in an All-Ireland semi-final or a, a qualifier or whatever it would be, quarter-final. And they're not 100% fit. So imagine doubling that and having 20 players who were unavailable to do the full training sessions under Fergal and Brian and the management team. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to hit the ground running and it will maybe take 10, 15 minutes for them to adjust as well, to get back into the rhythm of a game. And maybe by that time, it could be out of your reach. So there's a worry. There's no doubt about that. But Tyrone are going there. They obviously ship six goals in the National League game. I don't think that'll happen again. And I think, you know, it's going to be a closer game than some people expect. And a lot of people go back to 2003 and that big performance in the all Ireland semi-final. Tyrone went there. Nobody gave them a chance either. So... Tyrone are well used to being underdogs, Josh. Is the people of Tyrone giving them a chance, Paddy? Uh, if you talk to football people, yeah, but the supporters are always, you know, whoa, we're going to Crow Park, it's a big day out. But the reality is, you know what could happen. I think that's the worry, Josh. And you could, you know, you could be caught very, very easily on the day and suffer a bad beating. Look like the old days at Northern teams went down to Crow Park, it was a case of getting there. 
But even them days were different because you went to Crew Park, probably knowing you weren't going to win, but you went to the day's crack. It was a big occasion. It's not even like that anymore. You know, you go with the expectation you want to win the game. Yeah, but we're in a stra- in strange times. We're still in the thick of a pandemic, Paddy, and uh, we've seen what happened last week. The big Dublin run coming to an end. Uh, uh, a winning result for Tyrone. Might be a strange one. Might be seen as a strange one this weekend, but it's still possible. It's still possible, sure it is. No doubt in my mind that Tyrone have the players that have the ability. And you just see the, the next crop of players coming through with the Miners and just how good that particular group of players are. It's going to drive these our lads on talking to a couple of players this week, they've said that, that they've seen the success of the Miners and saying, look, we're not going to be around forever, but this next crop of players are coming through now and they are a damn good bunch. Yeah, speaking of that damn good bunch, as you put it, Paddy, uh, they've been playing some spectacular football in the championship. Uh, we've seen it against Donegal in the final in Ulster and then we've seen it last week against a very, very good Cork side. Um, this minor team, uh, we won't know until the weekend on Saturday if they're going to be All-Ireland champions or not, but already they're talking up that this is one of the possibly the best minor teams that has been in Toronto for quite a long time, Paddy. I would have to agree. Um, you, have to, you have to roll back a few months to see how difficult this was for Jared Donnelly because he came in at a time when there was two minor teams. Collie Holmes and his men are still to finish off 2020. And he was delayed in getting this full panel together because of that. Obviously, there were players to come through. So that was difficult for him. But he got the players going. He got a, he worked very hard to get a good backroom team. Uh, Gary Hetherington, uh, Connor Gormley, Kieran Gurley among them. Uh, Tommy Canavan, players of that, of, of quality themselves, who, who are, have brought something completely different to the management table for him. And they've worked really, really hard. But the difference in this minor team and other minor teams, they're a very good bunch. They're a very grounded bunch of individuals. The pandemic has had an effect on them, I'm sure, as young men. They'll be out partying like, like any normal young lad. But they've been very, very grounded. And you only have to talk to Cormac Devlin, the captain of the side. You only have to do that to see how, how laid back they are and how positive they are. Yeah, and what I noticed about them was, Paddy, that they didn't panic in that uh, Ulster minor final against against Donegal. And you mentioned one guy there, young Devlin, who who got the man of the match. Comes from, as we all know, a good breed and good stock, so he does, Paddy. Um, but he wasn't up until that final quarter when he was needed in the question. He wasn't really in the game. He kicked a lot of wide, so he did from, from freeze. And then they didn't panic, Tyrone, which I was very impressed with. And another thing I was impressed with them by, Paddy, was the sheer physicality that they brought to the game and the conditioning of some of the players. Like, my God, that Rory McHugh guy in the middle of the field uh, is a fantastic footballer, but the physique of the young man at that age going into an Ulster minor final was was mind-blowing. And you've seen that just, not just with McHugh or Devlin, but a lot of other players as well, how well they had matured physically uh, and their, S, their strength and conditioning. And obviously the hard work that they did on themselves uh, in the pandemic before they were allowed back, Paddy. It's, it's, you can see now that that's... That's taking them the miles that they need to get to an All Ireland final. Well, you look at, at the likes of the Donald Moore Club with seven representatives in the squad. It says a lot about Donald Moore's youth policy over the years. And then you mentioned Cormac Devlin and Connor Owens, two lads who got the goals against Donegal. They had been very quiet before that. Ten minutes spell, boom, boom, two goals, that's the game over. And obviously last week against Cork, they missed a lot. Which you expect a manager after scoring 23 points in an All Ireland semi final to say that was brilliant or whatever. Immediately, Jared was saying, We've problems there. We didn't finish them off the way we could have finished them off. There's a ruthlessness about Tyrone, and he wants to see that coming through as well. I think we all do, but they're a special bunch, even to talk to. You know, young Ronan Strain from my own club, Oma, there as well. Michael Rafferty from Kelly Clahar, just named two. Neil Robinson, the goalkeeper. They're very grounded. And you often see a minor team there where there's always one to get the hair dyed or whatever. Not that mean you need the hair dyed now, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but, you know, there's the hair dyed. There's a bit of, you know, flamboyance about them. There's none of that with this group of players. They're all very, very sensible when it comes to football. And maybe it has to do with the pandemic. I don't know. Or maybe it's Jared Donnelly's management. He's brought a similar style to Esker Emmett's at club level. He's a Stewartstown club man. He's been managing Esker this year. They topped the table. throw minors to through to an All-Ireland final. You know, there's something about his management that works. Yeah, and he's a very grounded young man himself. Yeah, and there's something about the backroom team that he has as well. You know, they're all winners still there, Paddy. And Conor Gorman, Aaron Gurley, 
Yeah, they just all rhyme off the they tongue. Been there, the yeah. But there's one man there, you know, like said Gary Hellerington, very mm -hmm. mild mannered coach. People don't talk a lot, a lot about him, but he's brought an awful lot to the table as well. Tommy Canavan, strength and conditioning coach. And then you have uh, loads of others behind the scenes, a great strong physio team. Um, who Jared always talks about. And we have to mention, I'd, I'd be shot for not doing it, his daughter, Grace, who's always at every match. She's only a wee tight, but she's always she's always saying, I said to her, how did Daddy do? Daddy done good. And that's, you know, <laughs> but it, that's it. But he comes from a, but she, the, the, his wife comes from a football family as well, Elaine, mm -hmm. she, former Carrick Ward player. You know, so it's a very strong GA connection through the whole body of that group of players, management and everything. And it's coming to the fore now. Yeah. What about the opposition? What do you know about Meath for the weekend, Paddy? What will they what will they take to the table in Croke Park? Well, they beat Dublin, obviously, in the Leinster mm. final. They beat Louth in a semi final. That was their two games only in Leinster. And obviously they beat Slago last week. Eventually coming good in the latter stages and, and pushing on. I think it was maybe five or six points in the end of it. So they were strong and they are a strong side. They've one or two very good individuals, I think. I don't know an awful lot about them, but Again, you can only look at, look at from a Tyrone perspective what they have and the quality they have. I think they're unstoppable in terms of winning an All Ireland. And I don't, you know, people talked about Cork being a big, physical, strong side, and all of a sudden they were brushed aside. The game was over by half time. So yeah. it's a big weekend for Tyrone. Obviously, the gears are out on Saturday as well, which is a very big disappointment. I have to say, Oshin, that the LGFA and the GA haven't worked together in terms of fixtures. That's a big thing because you have Emma Brennan there, who's obviously Lee Brennan, Ray Brennan's sister, um, Megan Kerr, who's Maddie Donnelly's girlfriend. You know, there's a lot of family connections in the both teams and families have to be split up. And that's not a good thing. And there's no foresight on it. Last weekend, mm -hmm. for example, Tyrone Camogie's side played Wicklow in the Nancy Murray Cup semi-final at, in a scheme. That game was at 530 Tyrone ladies were playing obviously at two o'clock. Game went to extra time for Grania Rafferty and Regan Fay, two big components of the Hurland side or the Camogie side, had to go and play Camogie as soon as that uh, game was over. So there's an awful lot of not cross thinking being done here, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's a disappointment. Communication goes a long way, Paddy, doesn't it? It goes a long way, I've seen, but it's a bit of common sense as well. Mm. I think, and that's the frustrating thing from so many people. Uh, mm -hmm. The LGFA had actually moved that game in Kenny Gad, of all places, to 12.45 to allow Gears to get to Dublin. Impossible. You know, right. it, it, I don't know who thinks these things up, but, it, it, you know, it, it's frustrating for the families and people who want to see the, the, the men and the, the minors. Yeah. You know, you want to see success from all the teams. If the Camogues are out on Sunday, at least there's a wee bit of common sense with that. If the Camogues are out on Sunday against Mayo, the minors are out on Sunday against Mayo. So that's five own teams out in the one weekend and still room for club football in the county yeah. so <laughs> that's not a bad complaint when you weigh it up like that uh patty that you got 500 county teams still in championship action in the last weekend in august absolutely and uh maybe we'll be seeing uh, a mr boner back with dunny gold too i believe is that correct well there's talk of that at the moment patty yeah uh, he's, he's looking for another two-year term so he is but yeah, i don't know what he i don't know what he's got to do now with five tyrone teams playing in the, in the one weekend now patty but i'm sure he'll be keen to keep an eye on those tyrone teams though yeah yeah i'm sure he will <laughs> i'm sure he will he, he would feel that he owes tyrone one now, now, now at this stage patty but listen just back to the seniors before we wrap up obviously the the, the, the tyrone miners are seen as raging hot favorites for their game um Kerry will be seen as favourites then for the for the senior game, given all that has gone on with Tyrone and COVID since since the Ulster final and the delay of this game and the lack of preparation time available to to Fergal Logan and and to Brian Deher. But don't rule out a shock. Could be in the cards. Don't rule out a shock, absolutely, because you know, the six goals that they conceded that day against Kerry in the National League semi final, one of them was a freak goal. Obviously, the one that was chipped over Neil Morgan's head. Them things should be happening. So it'll be interesting. My phone's going in the background. I don't even know where it is. I think so there you are. I don't know who it is talking for me. I don't know, why. I don't know where it is. But anyway, we'll not worry about that, sure. But can we yeah. know a shock, I think, will be on the cards. Throw okay. That's Patty. Go on to that phone. Good to talk to you. Brian Doher or Fergal Logan, maybe give me the call. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Declan Boner. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, thanks, Patty. Thanks, <laughs>